Hey guys, Paragon here and welcome back to my How To Crucible series. Sorry this one is a little bit late, I've been very busy finishing the King's Fall hard raid and also putting together my guides for the raid. But today we are going to be going through decision making. Now decision making is a huge part of your ability to have an impact on the game. So if you're making good decisions, you can make up for your lack of gun skill or you can make up for your lack of positioning if you have really good decision making because this is going to help put you in strong positions and help you counter your opponents. So we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at what good decision making looks like, what bad decision making looks like, and how to improve your decision making. So good decision making looks like someone who knows when to be aggressive and when to be defensive or retreat from a gunfight. Now, we all want to get in and get kills and stay in that gunfight and just keep slaying. The problem with this is you need to know when to back off the gas and when to push forward full throttle. So this is a concept of taking advantage of pressure. Now, if we look at this in a 3v3 situation, if we are in trials, we have the first pick. We end up getting the first snipe. It's now a 3v2. The first thing that's going through my mind is, are we able to push and get pressure, or does the enemy team have a stronger position than us? If they have a strong position, I'm not going to push. I am now going to reposition myself to get in a spot where I can provide more pressure. So your decision of whether you push or you don't push is dependent on what is going on in the game. How much pressure do you have on the enemy team? Because the more pressure you have, you are forcing them to make errors. If you can force them into making errors, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to play wrong or play in a, in a way that's going to help you. And you've forced a position that you can get an advantage out of. Knowing when to be defensive is knowing when to back off. You cannot win every single gunfight. I don't care how good your gun skills are or uh, how god mode your KD is. You are going to lose gunfights every now and then, and there are going to be gunfights where you are just outnumbered, you are getting outplayed, you need to get out of there. So do not go in thinking you can win every gunfight. You may have the most OP gun in the current meta, that doesn't make any difference. If you are getting into gunfights that you don't need to, or are poorly positioning yourself, you need to learn how to play defensive. So understanding how to use your super. Supers have a huge impact on the game. Just because your super is full, that doesn't mean you have to use it on the next guy that comes around the corner. You might have saved it for another five seconds and had the chance to get a, a three or four kill, or you might have saved it and had a chance to shut down someone else's super. Now that's huge, because if you can shut down someone else's super, they've used their super and gotten nothing, you've used your super, you got a kill, and you also prevented them from killing more members of your team. So that's a net gain for your team, a huge benefit for you. So think about using your super, when is the best time to use that? Now, another thing with good decisions is understand your strengths and your weaknesses. Now this is both for your loadout and you as a player. Your decisions, if you're not com comfortable sniping, then either practice it more or play with a playstyle that is different. Just because the meta forces you to play a certain way, obviously the meta is the meta for a reason, but you need to understand what playstyles work for you and what gun loadouts work for you and on different maps. So now your decisions should be based around your strengths and your weaknesses. If you're a great sniper and you're running into the middle of the map all the time, you're probably going to have a hard time dealing with all the shotguns there. The majority of maps in Destiny favor shotguns and close quarter game. That's just how the maps are built. So there's no point whinging about it. You have to develop a strategy to work around that to be able to win your engagements. So someone who's making good decisions will have a high success rate in their firefights and a very, very high chance of outplays. Now outplays are when you are in a position where you are either outnumbered, outgunned, 
or just in, in a bad spot and you're able to pull off the win. So you, you kill them in the 1v1. You might have turned on them or you might have the 1v3 and you win the 1v3 encounter. This someone who's making good decisions will be able to make the crazy plays that you see that are in montages or that are in highlight reels. Those kind of clips, sometimes people get lucky but some people are able to pull them off consistently. If you can make good decisions and you know when to fight, when to outplay people, that is going to help you big time. The last thing a player who makes good decisions is they are going to work very well with their teammates. They are going to synergize with their teammates. If they have a mate who is sniping and they're sniping as well, they're going to work on crossfire angles. Or if, they have a, if they're going to be a rusher, they're going to know how to push and flank when their team has got pressure. So let's look at a couple of things that show a player with bad decision making. Number one, getting greedy and chasing kills. Now, I see this all the time. I do it myself. It's one of the biggest mistakes I personally make. You get the enemy player low and you rush in for that kill. You want that kill, you want those points, you want that extra super energy, but you die in the process or his mate was there or he outplays you because he baits you into a position where he actually gets an advantage. So be very careful. You do not always have to run in and finish off your kills. If you think about a trials match, if you can get someone down low enough, they are essentially out of that gunfight for up to 10, maybe even 12 seconds. That's a lot of time. That gives your team time to reposition. It gives you time to create more pressure and kill maybe another one of their teammates and then come in to finish off the kill. So make sure you are not getting greedy and chasing kills unnecessarily. The second thing, you try to contest when outnumbered or outgunned. Now, this is where there's the fine line between going ham and making those crazy plays and just being stupid and thinking you're Rambo and dying for no reason. Now, if you're running into gunfights there and you're all constantly dying from crossfire, you need to have a think about, is it worth me pushing in to try and get those one or two kills? Or should you be playing from different angles? So it's very important that you do not always contest when outnumbered or outgunned until you are confident with your gun skill and your ability to do so. And then your heightened decision making will allow you to set yourself up in advantageous positions when in these encounters. So the last thing is uh, it's sort of a combo of number one, pushing alone and making the same mistakes repeatedly. So if you're that guy who runs around, never is with is never with his teammates and is always trying to flank, you are actually making bad decisions because flanking is not a strategy you use for an entire game. Flanking is a strategy you need to use when it's appropriate. If you just flank for the sake of going, oh, all my teammates suck and they die all the time, so I'm just going to run around the map and get kills from the other side, you are actually hindering your team and not making a good decision because your flank depends on how good your team's pressure is and their ability to take the enemy's attention off you. So this is where in a 3v3, flanking is very, very popular, even in 6v6 matches, but you need to understand how to flank and when to flank at the right time. So looking at someone making the same mistakes repeatedly, have you ever had a trials match where you went 5-0 and oh and the enemy team kept making the same play every single time? Now how easy are those games? Those games are not difficult to deal with because the enemy team is constantly making the same mistake. Do not be that guy that when you get sniped in the same position on every single round that you run back to that position. Try to figure out another way to counter it or another way around the map. Very, very important. So how do you improve your decision making? Number one, be analytical of your mistakes, self-evaluate and watch videos. So both Xbox and PlayStation have their own self-recording functions. Record your gameplay and watch it. Have a look at when you're dying, when you're making mistakes, when things are going wrong. Figure out what has happened. Don't blame, don't rage. You need to think, what did I do wrong in that position and how could I have done better? How could I have improved and made a better decision in that moment? Was I too aggressive? Was I too defensive? Was I just outnumbered and I decided to contest? You need to think about these things and be honest with yourself don't blame others or lag or OP guns or the meta is broken. You need to always analyze yourself. And the second thing, watch other players that are good. 
If you watch some of the best players in Destiny, you will notice number one, their gun skill is incredible, but their decision making is what makes the difference. There are loads of players out there with really, really good gun skill, but their decision making is not the best, and it really impairs their ability to have a big impact on the game. So guys, that is decision making. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment if you have any questions, and be sure to tune in for more Destiny content. See ya!